We're at home with uh, Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter. Um, it's Bill and Ted face the music time. And thanks for bringing the franchise back. There's so much wrapped up in the Bill and Ted's experience beyond the writing and the acting and, and the movies themselves. And, and music plays such a significant role. And when you started doing the first film, were you fans of this type of music? Or did you have to get into role in order to appreciate a band like Extreme? Yeah, oftentimes the music for me was like, you know, Van Halen was kind of like the source for Bill and Ted. Um, and oftentimes the music, other than people who are on camera, the music, and maybe Steve Vai, yeah. the music came after when Alex and I were, were finished. Yeah. <laughs> like <after> yeah. <laughs> So you guys didn't really know at the time when you were working on the film exactly where it was going to land. So they could have put anything in there. Yeah, on neither film. In fact, sometimes they were talking about bands that didn't ever end up in the soundtrack. Now, there's a, there's a spirit to the movies, a certain kind of rock and roll spirit. And the soundtracks tend to kind of imbue that spirit with the times, with whatever is kind of happening at that time. So to Keanu's point with Bill and Ted 1, you know, our, the references for us are like Megadeth, Van Halen, uh, sort of other kind of pretty heavy, hard rock bands. Uh, yeah. The soundtracks have never tended to really represent much of that kind of music. They tend to be a little poppier. I knew about Extreme. I actually did a music, directed a music video for Extreme. I mean, after Bill and Ted won. Uh, but it, I mean, to answer your question fairly, Keanu and I are very different <laughs> than the characters. And you know, we're not we're not two guys from the valley. We're not from the West Coast at all. And uh, I think there's some crossover in our musical interests with uh, some of the things that Bill and Ted like, but we're very different than them. So our own musical taste is quite different than than Bill and Ted's musical taste. Kiss and God gave rock and roll to you <laughs> too, which is you know, Kiss is a band that's referenced in the Weezer video, which we're going to get to a little bit later on, which was really fun too, and kind of getting to to do some work with Rivers in the band. Um, anyone got a good Kiss story? growing up because factor into your life in any way shape or form beyond bill and ted i mean that's a really good song i think too by the way kiss was the first big concert i ever saw i was a kiss fanatic when i was a kid i was a member of the kiss army i still have what? Hey, it's very yes I, it's very sweet i found my old uh family photo albums recently and i'm mean, very dog-eared and and i have like three pages of my of my photo album it was like my mom, my dad, my brother, my cat. Three pages of that photo album are all my Kiss Army memorabilia, like in my photo album, like lovingly taped in and like placed. So yeah, I saw I saw Kiss at the St. Louis Checkerdome in 1977. It was an era when concerts were so loud that none of us could hear for like two full days after the show. It was just like a ringing sound, and they had the hydraulics and fire and all of that. So I told Gene Simmons that story when we met him. Um, actually, I got to meet him even before we did Bill, Bill and Ted. I met him. They came backstage and I was doing Peter Pan on Broadway and I was completely starstruck. Um, but I remember telling him uh, how big an impact they had on me as a little kid. I think he thought that was funny. Wait, what did you get? When, what did you get in the Kiss Army? In yeah. Kiss Army, you got a, a patch, like a Kiss Army arm patch, cloth arm patch. You got like special stickers. Like, yeah, I had like, like two, two pages of my photo album were like, are like, st or like collector stickers of like all the different, you got like a special version of the Destroyer cover. Yeah, it's, dude, it was, it was, it was off the chain. Um, but at like 12 years old, that was it. That was like my whole universe. I'd imagine that once you're in the Kiss Army, you're always in the Kiss Army, right? I think if I look at the terms and, and terms and conditions that I, I, I think I am eligible for recon. I think they can call me back at any time. Yeah, and I would have to go. Yeah. Reaper Rat. I, I remember this moment because Rat was so new and so fresh and felt so important at the time. And this was like, wow, Bill and Ted's is going down this road with Steve Vai. This is crazy. Um, and I want to talk a little bit, it just leads me into the whole idea of death and your relationship with death in the movie and working with William Sadler and how much fun that was in the roles within that triangle because they're so instrumental to the success of the film. Yeah, I was uh, working with Sadler. I mean, he's, he's a genius. I don't know. I mean, I remember just us working with him and him embracing us and then just, it was on. Like, it was like, <laughs> let's go. Like, it was on. Yeah. 
right? Yeah, there's a there's an aspect to the roles, and it's this kind of physical comedy, I think, where uh, Keanu and I, we discovered in the audition process for Bill and Ted 1 that we came at the characters very similarly, and there was a real groove to working to each other in a physical kind of instinctive, almost like the way a band is together, right? Which is not uncommon in acting, but it can be uncommon to find someone you connect with that way. Um, we love working with everyone. We always get great ensembles in these movies that are in incredible actors. But Sadler is really that other member of the band. Like he's like, when we're working with Billy, it's like when I'm working with Keanu, it's just like, you don't think about it at all. You could literally improv for hours and just, it would just keep going. And there'd be no, it would all work. It was like very much like the band just got back together in that way. Yeah. There's an important member of the band that's uh, not with you, you guys on this on this particular adventure, you know, and um, a song by Mastodon called Rufus Lives pays respect to that character played by the late, great George Carlin. And uh, I wondered if one of you wants to sort of share, you know, a really nice story about working with George Carlin, who was a genius on screen. Gosh, I mean, he was so nice to us. He was such a professional. I mean, Alex and I were gobsmacked to meet him, <laughs> and be working with him. Both, you know, such, you know, just amazing. Yeah, I think from the first film to the second film, he was kind of like, hey, nice to see you guys. How's it going? You know, <laughs> the first <laughs> the first one, he was total pro. But I think there was a part of him that was like. And, and this is kind of cool of him is that there might have been a part of him. I don't know, Alex, if you feel this way, but like kind of like, what am I doing here? But I'm here. <laughs> and, <laughs> And I'm going to do the gig and I'm going to do it really well. And I'm going to play it straight, I'm not going to comment. And I'm going to understand what we're doing. And he's Rufus. I'm Rufus and you're Bill and Ted. And here we go. Yeah, I think so. I think that honestly, a lot of people had that <laughs> feeling on Bill and Ted one. I would say probably other than you and me and Stephen Herrick and Chris and Ed. We all kind of knew the playground that we were in. And a lot of that credit goes to Steve Herrick, who directed Bill and Ted One, who just who created a very specific playground that we could all have kind of rules and boundaries in. Uh, but George, I think that was kind of his view of his life on this planet. You know, I think that George was like, what is this thing we call the human race and and society and politics and morality and and, and I'm going to commit to it and I'm going to comment on it, but I'm going to do it with heart and sincerity. And, but you know, there was always, I mean, that's in his, in his performance, right? The, Hmm, what does it mean? I don't know. You know, uh, I think he was like that when he showed up and he looked at me and <laughs> Keanu, like, who are these guys? I don't know. Can they act? I don't know. Maybe they can, you know, <laughs> but I'm going to do it. The yeah. shoot in front of the circle. Yeah. K? I mean, come on. <laughs> He was like, yeah. like yeah. he was like the grown up in the room. He was like He okay. really was, yeah. Yeah. Don't it was it wasn't it, it was acting and it wasn't acting. I remember that. I remember really feeling very small and yeah, yeah. Uh, very childlike in his presence. I want to ask you, Alex, um, because I know both of you are real music fans. Um, you know, Alex, you, you have you know, directed music videos, been involved in creating documentaries. I know music plays a big role in your life. Um, Keanu, you're a, you know, you're a musician. You're a professional musician, mate. You've I've been on tour. You've been on tour. You've got, your, you've got a laminate, yes? Yeah? I've got a couple. Alex, <laughs> first of all, how's the Zappa documentary? How's it all coming together? Because that is a huge undertaking uh, to take on that kind of story of someone who... Words, I can't, I, I've tried to describe Frank Zappa to my kids before and I fail miserably every time. So how are you getting on? Oh, well, we're done. I mean, we finished the film, uh, frankly, before I left to go do Bill and Ted. Uh, and uh, then I did a little bit of post on it when we got back. I was, it was a six year journey. Um, but then COVID really kind of stopped us in our tracks. We were about to start a, a big global festival tour uh, with a world premiere at South by Southwest literally the week that COVID shut the planet down. So i um, very happy that we uh, made a deal with Magnolia Films who are amazing and one of my favorite uh, companies in the business. And uh, we're rolling the movie out at the end of November. Um, I'm really proud of it. It was very, very, very hard. Um, and that was, I knew that going in that like I pitched this thing to Gail, to Frank's widow, 
um, as a film that would hopefully really convey who he was as an artist um, and the time that he lived in. And we get into the history of music. We get into the, you know, the sexual revolution and the MTV revolution and the Czechoslovakian revolution. And Frank was at the middle of the center of all of these things. So uh, it's just an extraordinary life. And I'm really, really grateful we got to make it. So hopefully folks will like it. Keanu, I've got to ask you, you know, I know that, you know, music is a passion of yours, regardless of whether, you know, you're playing a character involved in it or you're getting to, to tour or make records or do the things that you've achieved. Um, where does it fit into your life now? You know, what, in amongst all your other work, um, how do you sort of go to music and, and, and use music? Do you still play? Do you jam with people? Do you write? Do you do it just for fun? The band broke up over a decade ago, uh, 15 years, I guess, almost. Um, I still play bass. Uh, I jammed a jam with the drummer and and then i guess the past year um uh brett domrose and robert mailhouse who i played in dog star with we've uh, gotten back together and started uh playing the old songs and starting to try to write some new stuff um so that took a time so i mean we hadn't played together for i don't know 12 years or something like that 15 years so. <clears throat> but um but it's been fun. I jumped off that ledge, which is always a little sketchy, you know, when you first meet someone, you're like, oh, yeah, hey, nice to see you. I interviewed you uh, probably about 25 years ago in Auckland. You were there with Dogstar, <laughs> and you were on tour with John Bon Jovi. You know, and, and yeah. Oh, that was a fun tour. We got, you know, we got to play for the security people in the daytime. <laughs> you know, we got to open for all the parking attendants and... You know, all the security people and the vendors who were showing up at the event. You know, so like in the day. You know what they say about those slots, Keanu? You get the best catering. You get the best seats in the house. You're done by one. You're done by oh, one. Yeah. yeah, man. We were in the pool. We were in the pool. By <laughs> I'm excited you guys are back. And I want to say this to end. These films have become part of the pop culture lexicon. They have been something that generations have come to over and over again. But at the deep core value of what these films represent is to be kinder to one another and search for positive energy through challenge. And I think that's why you guys are back playing these roles and why this movie matters now is because in and amongst all the fun and the bogus and the most excellent is the idea of kindness and that Bill and Ted are searching for kindness. They may be doing it in a goofy way, but they're searching for ultimately for kindness. And I want to say thanks very much for bringing the, the movie back because there's some subversive shit going on here. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thank That's you. That's a really kind word, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, we really do. We appreciate it. Appreciate being, having the chance to do it again and to hopefully make some people smile a little bit right now.